Welcome to Coast View, the show that every single day celebrates the men and women who are making Coast of Mississippi such an amazing place to live, work, and play. If you're a regular, regular listener of Coast View, you know this, that I have an affinity to first responders. I'm a former, former paramedic. I was in pre-med for one, at, at one time in my life and changed my major, went to the, went to the Sun-Herald as an intern, and the rest was history. But but I still, you know, when once a paramedic, you're kind of always a paramedic, and you have a dr- tremendous appreciation for policemen and firemen and anyone else involved in being a first responder. You also know that I have a uh, an incredible affinity for the military community here in coastal Mississippi, and uh, can't bring enough attention to what all of these incredible public servants do to help improve the quality of life for all of us here in coastal Mississippi. we got a great show today. Today is going to be centered around the city of Biloxi, and I'm going to come back in the second half of the show and, and uh, talk to the uh, fire chief for the city of, of Biloxi, Nick Geyser. He and I spent time together about a year ago telling his story, and it's uh, it was a terrific story. And we're going to get the latest from from Nick here shortly. And again, if you're a regular listener, you've heard me with Chief John Miller from the uh, city uh, on a number of occasions. John and I have had terrific visits, and I have tremendous admiration for him as a leader. And uh, I, you know, it's not easy being a leader of uh, of the police department these days. But I think uh, John Miller and his team have done a terrific job of of meeting the challenges head on and uh, in building a great team. And with that said, we're actually going to talk to uh, someone who is the assistant chief for the uh, Biloxi uh, Police Department, uh, Christopher Deback, who is someone I'd look forward to getting to know better. So without any further ado, Christopher, how you doing, my friend? I'm doing great, and I appreciate the opportunity to talk with you this morning. It's it's good to see you. Hey, where are you sitting right now? I'm in my office, uh, you know, got a great view of the parking lot. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> hey, but, you, but look, that is a nice building, though, isn't it? It is. It's been uh, great for the past 20 years, and um, uh, we just keep upgrading it and keeping it keeping it going for us. Well, you heard what I said. I mean, first responders play such an important role in this community. Uh, you get to work closely, very closely, with, with John Miller, the chief there, and a great team of people. But you're really focused – I mean, you're very strategically focused. What can we do to do our jobs better, to to the outreach to the community? John Miller and I have talked in great detail about why that's important. It's important to be proactive about that because when you're proactive about that, it's easier to deal with conflict when you already have a relationship as opposed to have conflict and then try to develop a relationship. It's very difficult to do that. And you got your outreach into the community is a really important part of what you do, isn't it? That's right. And, you know, that community relationship is, is of utmost importance, that trust that we're going to do the right things for the right reasons. Um, you know, said way back when the public are the police and the police are the public. We're all one. So, Krista, where did you grow up? I, I grew up uh, around. Uh, my dad was in the military. My mom is from Biloxi. Uh, so I spent my time uh, uh, in Illinois, Germany, Italy, Turkey. Um, and then I joined the Army and and eventually moved back down to the to the coast here. Were you involved in in uh, in um, first responder work when you were in the army, or was that something that you did later? No, I was later. I was a mechanic, so uh, yeah, had quite the yeah. career change. Yeah, that's that's interesting. So, how long have you been with the department? I've been here about twenty four years now. Um, started in ninety eight, and. Um, don't plan on leaving anytime soon. So it's been a great career and a great community to work for. So you started as a patrolman? I, I did. Uh, I, I started as a patrolman, um, worked night shift, day shift, evening shift. Um, I was a canine officer for a little while, had an explosive uh, canine, uh, worked in the schools for a couple of years. Um, most of my career I spent in investigations, working in property crimes or violent crimes. And then uh, I moved to the, the admin side of things, uh, progressing up. Well, that's, that's interesting. And when were you named the assistant chief of police? It would have been May of uh, last year, 2021. Well, congratulations. We should have already talked uh, since then, <laughs> for sure. Um, so if, how, do you, how do you think about the state of affairs these days for the, for, the, uh, for the Biloxi Police Department? When you're just talking to someone about how things are going, how do you talk about it? 
Well, I think as far as the department goes, you know, things are going pretty good. Um, you know, there's always room, room for improvement. Uh, we look at it every day. Um, as far as community, I don't think there's any better place to work. We have a great community that supports us, is there when we need them. And uh, uh, without them, the resolution of, of crimes or whatever it is, is almost impossible. Yeah, I've had I've had the opportunity to be joined many times by Mayor Fofo Gillage. Uh, he's been on the show countless number of times, but I, I knew him long before he was he was uh, the the mayor. I married a, a Bahanovich from Biloxi, so I have uh, I'm, you know married into the the core of Biloxi, and uh, you know part of her family is is French, and the other part is Croatian. And uh, my kids are are now, you know, descendants of that great Croatian culture that makes up uh, uh, Biloxi. And so he and I really connect on that. But we just connect in general. And he has a he has a passion for doing the best job possible. He really, really tries to work hard to provide support for you guys. And uh, it makes a difference, doesn't it? It does. Um, having not only the support, but the support from your administration. Um it makes a whole world of difference. Yeah. So look, um, one of the things that the chief and I have talked about many times is that an ongoing challenge for the police department is recruiting. How, how is it going these days? Well, it, it's a nationwide problem. Um, the law enforcement career, uh, some people look at it as a job now rather than a career. Um, some people don't want to get into the profession. Um, but with anything, it's like a pendulum. You know, I'm sure we'll see that pendulum swing back. Uh, we have uh, kind of revitalized, uh, changed up the way we're doing it at uh, the beginning of the year, and we started testing once a month and so forth. So we've been able to hire more this year than we have in the past several years. Yeah. Yeah, I see more women on the streets these days. That's right. We, we have more uh, women applying, minorities, and uh, it's a great thing, you know, the, the diversification to match our community. Uh, is, you know, so they, they see what we're doing and they're part of it. So what's your, what's your pitch to someone who's considering, um, you know, law enforcement and, and you've got a real opportunity to, to hook them, but what's your pitch to them? Well, you know, we have a great recruiting division or, or unit, um, you know, get with them, you know, sit down, talk to them, see, see, uh, the pros and cons for you, what you're looking at doing, um, look at our department as a whole, the, the diversification with units, what you can do throughout your career, where you can go, um, look at the education you have, what you're currently trying to get, and then come do a ride along, you know, see if it's something that's really for you, uh, wh where you want to go. Hey, I'm always curious about this. Um, what, what keeps you up at night about your role and the work that you do these days? Is it, is it, the rise in certain kinds of violent crime or, you know, making sure your guys are, are trained properly. I mean, what, what's the thing that, that, that keeps you up the most? I'd say a couple of things. Um, you know, one, the community, make sure we're doing the right thing uh, for the community um, uh, the best way we can, um, making sure we're staying in line with their ideas and thoughts, as well as, as our own people, making sure we're doing the right thing for them and their families. You know, if, if, if we could take care of uh, our people and the families, they're going to take care of uh, essentially the mission, if you will, and that's the public. Yeah. Hey, you know what's interesting? And again, the chief and I have talked about this, and, I've, and, and other chiefs and I have talked about this as well. But when you saw this defund the police effort happening across America and – you know this sort of uh, almost an anti-police thing that was that was that was uh, evolving. We didn't really see that much here. I mean, I, I think what we were lucky here that the the average citizen has a tremendous respect for the role that law enforcement plays in the community, and um, and I think we weathered whatever those national storms were really well locally. You know, I think about. It, let me tell you what. This is kind of interesting, but. I live on a cul-de-sac, and when I see a policeman come down my cul-de-sac, I, I, the first thing I do is run to, run to the uh, refrigerator and grab a, a Gatorade or something and run out the door and stop them and offer them something to drink and thank them for coming through my neighborhood. They're always incredibly polite, but I bet a lot of people do that. Do, do, you, do you find that people want to want to interact with the police and tell how much they appreciate the work that they're doing? 
Yeah, we, we do. And like I said before, you know, we have a great community, uh, truly appreciate everything they do. Um, uh, they come forward, bring, like you said, Gatorades, uh, meals, whatever it is, especially in times of need. Um, and, and then it goes with our administration as well. They, they see the need, they support us, and they have the same sentiment that the community does. Yeah. Okay. Look, uh, we're having a conversation with the Biloxi Police Department Assistant Chief Christopher D D back D back. We'll actually t talk about what kind of name this D capital D E and then capital B A C K D back. Uh, when we come back, we'll talk about the Citizens Academy and um, and other things that they're involved with. Lots of training, man. These guys train, 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 train. And when I come. In the next segment with, with Nick Geyser, what I remember most about the conversation he and I had about a year ago is the amount of train that he's had and that his team has on a regular basis. It's, it's, it's incredible how much focus they have on that. We'll see you after this break. Welcome back to Coast View. We're having a conversation with Biloxi P Police Department Assistant Chief Christopher D. Bank, D. Back. And uh, just having a terrific conversation. Hey, before we continue on, tell me about that name D back. Where does that come from? So, so it comes from the Netherlands. Um, you know, through genealogy searching and everything else. Uh, you know, we've been able to trace uh, uh, great grandfathers and their immigration over to uh, the United States. Well, listen, I had I had on my show recently the DA for for Harrison County. Of course, he's also. Uh, um, Stone County and Hancock County, and uh, we had a, just a great hour-long visit. It was Crosby Parker, of course, and well, you know one of his concerns is the the rise in violent crime here all along coastal Mississippi. How much do you guys talk about that? I, I I'm sure that it's got to consume a lot of conversations these days. What can you do to you know curtail it, and and how concerned are you about it? Uh, certainly, a quick response to it. Um, uh, it is a concern. Um, but that quick response and then the, the follow-up investigation thereafter to identify the person responsible uh, for accountability purposes, of course. Um, but that relationship with the community, uh, keeping that relationship, keep building on it, uh, keeping that trust, uh, that helps keep a lot of the violent crime down. Um, but, you know, there has been somewhat of an increase. So it's things that we have to work on every day. One of, one of the things we talked about was that... Um, the, um, the 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 people involved in violent crime have gotten younger, and uh, you know we're, we're we saw, when I was I spent some time in New Orleans, and certainly that was a big issue there as well. And we're seeing some of those sort of big city things starting to seep into our communities. Uh, the other thing that he was concerned about is the number of of crimes uh, that were that were unfortunately going against young people, young you know children, and he was really really focused on that as well. Of course, I mean, a good society is no number of crimes involving children are, are acceptable. And obviously, we're always going to be concerned about it. But uh, he's going to be coming back on and we're going to be talking more about that for sure. But it probably, uh, I, I, don't, I can't imagine a policeman having to deal with a crime involving a child. That's got to be very difficult. It, it is. And, and you had mentioned uh, what keeps you awake at night. So there's been crimes over over the years that that I was involved with as far as the investigation and and that certainly plays on your emotions, um, especially when you think about your own family. Um, but you got to work through it and uh, uh, keep focused on the the resolution of it, which is the apprehension of the of the, the suspect, and then um, through Crosby's office that that prosecution. Yeah, that's a it's a team effort. That's for sure. And, Absolutely. Uh, it's uh, it's so important to our community that that's for sure. I mean, good news is we don't have you know no amount of violent crime is acceptable, but we don't have the big big city issues. It's just that when you see a, a, a slight rise, which we've seen, it makes you want to really focus on how we can detour it. I mean, that's that's, that's right. the most important thing. Training. You heard me mention that just a second, but training, man, that's. You, the laws constantly changing. It's tough to be a patrolman these days. To, to, just to get ready to be effective in the street, is it, there's an enormous amount of training that goes with it, and there's a lot of ongoing training. Tell me about some of that. Certainly. So when you start out, of course, uh, the city of Biloxi, anyways, we we put you through a three week in house, uh, and then you'll go to the the state academy, which is about uh, twelve weeks. 
Um, then from there you come out and um, it's about three months that you're with a field training officer on average. Um, and then after that, you know, every officer has to have a continuing education every year, which is 24 CEUs a year. Um, most, most of our officers go through much more training than that. And then we have our monthly training. We go through, um, in-house, you know, the, the, some of the normal stuff, uh, aside from that, you have all the constitutional law, the state statutes, the ordinances, the, the case law, um, that you have to stay up with because things change on an annual basis. Unbelievable number of, uh, of, uh, training opportunities, but what it does is it builds, a committed team of patrolmen who are who who again are well trained and ready to go tackle the incidents that that arrived during the day. Hey, tell me about the Citizens Academy. So the Citizens Academy, we're doing. Uh, we had our first one in January. Um, the 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 second one just started in September. They're in the middle of it right now. It's about a ten week program. They go usually about once a week. Uh, right now it's on Wednesday nights. Um, then there's a few Saturdays where they have we'll, we'll call them field trips. Um, they do some field trips and they, they go through uh, what each unit in the department does, familiarization. Um, they, they do some ride-alongs, just kind of a better overall view of what the department does and what we do on a daily basis. That's good. I mean, and by the way, when you have that kind of outreach and, and create uh, awareness, it creates empathy, it creates better relationships, it, it, it helps people. Under, in fact, it probably helps in, to some extent with recruitment because I can only imagine the number of people that are touched and, and how they see possibilities for maybe themselves or, or family members. That's right. We, we've, we have picked up a few from the program, um, one specifically in our reserve program. Um, after you finish uh, the academy, then you can go into our volunteer, uh, it's called the VIP program, and you come in and help with different events or, or whatever it is with the police department and, and uh, uh, partnership with the community. We're about to get into the holidays, man. It's amazing to me. We're, Martha Allen and I were just talking about that. She's the executive director for Extra Table. and. It's amazing to me that we're already talking about Thanksgiving. I mean, Christmas is right around the corner. I mean, where did 2022 go? It flew uh, by. <laughs> I think someone stole it. I need to <laughs> dial 911 and tell them to go find it. it it's, it's, that, that's not good. But it has flown by. As you guys start thinking about the, the, about, you know, the holidays and holiday safety and all of that, what, what, what comes to mind for you? Well, we, you know, a couple of things. So uh, on Thanksgiving Day and um, Christmas Day, we usually de deliver those holiday meals uh, in partnership with the county and, and other police departments. Um, we're about to start sending that out. So we'll, we'll get that prepared as far as names where we need to take those meals. Uh, and then the other thing we usually do, you know, with all the shopping going on, uh, you know, some kind of public service, uh, uh, public safety announcement, you know, as far as, uh, you know, not leaving your car open, not leaving valuables in your car. Um, we do see a little bit of in increase in, in auto burglaries and so forth, uh, especially during the shopping seasons, Black Friday and so forth. Um, we just ask that everybody be aware of their surroundings, what they're leaving in their cars. Um, you know, certainly don't put that big screen TV box out by the trash, things like that. Hey, listen, uh, my neighbor had his catalytic converter sawed off, and I was able to check my camera. Couldn't get a lot of information other than how long it took them. They pulled up, and they were gone. They pulled up, and the it was cut off, and they were gone in less than, I don't know, three or four minutes. I mean, it just happened so rapidly. But those things are valuable, unfortunately, and, and that's, that's, that's a real issue with, with those around this, around just just all over, isn't it? It is, and it, and it kind of goes in spurts, but um, some of the ways, like like you had mentioned cameras, so over the years, there's more and more cameras, uh, private and, and uh, public cameras uh, around, which helps us with the investigation, identifying the people. There's different programs, the state that, you know, the, uh, the scrap yards have to report to, but the, the metal the, for Cadillac converters anyways, is the platinum inside. That's why yeah. people are stealing them, but, um, uh, certainly, you know, stay stay vigilant, uh, be aware of where you're parking, surroundings, that, that kind of thing. And people like yourself with cameras certainly assist in that investigation. Well, certainly at my house, let me tell you, 
we're loaded to bear. You can't you can't get near my house and not be on camera. Um, there are cameras everywhere. We we've, we <laughs> We have a, a camera system that goes with the original uh, alarm system, and then we have uh, the door ring doorbells that are that are backing those up, it, it, literally at every corner of the house. Uh, and in this particular case, I actually was able to actually look into my neighbor's yard and see when the guy pulled up. You know how long he was there and left. Uh, obviously, it was too far away, and in the dark, we weren't able to really get too much information about it. But but that it happened and when it happened and all that. But I bet that's really helpful to you guys now. I mean, I, I can only imagine because so many people are using those kind of systems today. Certainly. And e even if we only get a small portion off your system, um, through other systems down the road, we might be able to link things together and, and, and pull it together and, and come up with an identity. Um, doesn't always work out, but, you know, certainly we're going to go through everything we can to uh, uh, make sure we, we have every option to resolve the crime. Hey, real quick, and we're almost out of time, but what's a day in the life of, of, uh, of you, your, your world look like? Well, I'd like to say nap times, but uh, <laughs> no, you know, a lot of paperwork, uh, a, a, a lot of uh, meetings and, and so forth. Um, it's not, you know, that excitement of being on the road or, or solving a case, you know, it's kind of gone. It's, it's, it's all the admin stuff now. Well, that, hey, listen, man, it, it, you got to do it and you got to do it well. It takes a lot of people to make a, a the police department tick, and your role is incredibly important. Please tell Chief John Miller that I said hello. It's been a pleasure to visit with you for sure, buddy. Well, I appreciate the time and I uh, appreciate talking with you. This has been the uh, Assistant Chief of Police for the City of Biloxi, Christopher D. Back. It's been a pleasure. When we come back, we're going to have my old friend Nick Geyser, who's the chief of fire fire department for the city of Biloxi. We'll see you after this.